Hello guys and welcome to another Blender Know How tutorial. In this video we're going to learn how to create this water. This is uh, actually a photo in the background taken by a friend of mine. His name is EJ Polera and you can find him at Instagram at E-J-P-E-L-E-R-A. Uh, check him out. And yeah, so we're going to be creating this water that you can see here. This I, I actually cropped out water from the actual scene and then put in this fake CG water. Some really cool things with this is that it will react to HDRI photos, like 360 photos, things like that. It'll also react to any kind of um, environmental things that you have going on in your Blender scene already. So this is a really good way to get uh, results quickly because it's just a shader and it's really easy. So you can see the biggest problem with this is, is around the edges there's actually nothing going on. It's a fake, it's kind of being faked. So um, this may not work for every purpose, but I would try this first as it's pretty simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this cube. Hit Shift A, add mesh plane. Scale it up a little bit using the S. Hit zero on your numpad, go into the camera, move it down, get it positioned where you need to by hitting G. And then R twice will orbit it. R once rotates it. Uh, I find R twice actually does more of what I want it to do most of the time. So then hit G. You just get it kind of down here because most of the time when you're looking at water, it's easier to see it from the angle down here. Click on your plane and then let's uh, let's make a shader for it. So down here in the corner, you can see there's like a little triangle where the corners of these meets. Just right above that, click and drag and it will make a new pane. Go here and click shader editor hit new zoom in here a little bit and we're going to make a shader for this so click on the material or the shader preview i think that's what it is uh, the material preview mode let's click on that because we can see what's going on and hit shift a add and then let's add a noise texture we're going to end up putting this down here in the normal but just so you can see what this is put it into the base color you can put the factor and color both into the base color. This is a really good way of debugging too. So like if you don't know what's going wrong and making a shader, this is a really good way to just find out. Just plug it straight into that base color. You'll see what's going on. Okay, so once we have that in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna connect this to the normal. We can't just well we can technically just connect this straight up to the normal. It kinda works, right? Some quick tips, the normal down here. This will help it react to light. And you won't see this because it's a material preview mode, but if you click here on the EV, um, you can see um, certain things like this. Certain colors get affected by light more or less. So that's what we're gonna be working with because water has those properties. So click back on your plane if you clicked off of it. Uh, the only problem is we need to convert it from this weird color mixture thing into um, a bump map. So just hit Shift A, add, and then type in bump. And then just slide it in there. If you click it while it's in the location of that line, it will just automatically drop it in there. Let's click it. Let's take the normal. It's going to be off the normal and put it into the height. And you'll see that if you get down or start moving, you might see, oh, whoops. I guess it's got to be connected for it to do something. If you get down and move, you're going to start to see it's doing stuff, but it's kind of hard. Uh, you won't really see much right now. Uh, you can still see it's multicolored. So let's go ahead and scale it up. And now you're going to start seeing the normals. If I take off this normal, you're going to see a big difference. And it's mainly in the value change. It looks flat. And it is flat. It's just a plane. But if you connect this normal... Because the way the light reacts with it, it doesn't look flat anymore. And that's exactly what we want. Water can look, water can be simulated on a flat plane, but look 3D. So this is a, just, as long as it's not like huge waves, right? The only thing is, is when it breaks immersion is around the corners. So be careful with those. You want to either hide the corners or do something with that. Make sure that that's not a focal point. This, the corners of the plane are what, the, what, where this doesn't work. So let's go ahead and, yeah, so this is looking pretty good. What we want to do now is we just want to make sure that this is connect, hooked up to uh, a UV map. 
for the plane. So let's just type in UV map and put right here. And you can just connect UV to vector. And it's not, this isn't correct, but if you hit Shift A and then uh, look for mapping and then just drag that on top of that line, that's exactly what we want. Some really cool things with this now is as soon as this loads up, you can actually move. Um, you can actually make the waves move, and it's moving really fast. So we can actually, like, just do 0 0.01. You can see that it just shifted it along the x-axis. Pretty cool. Okay, so now let's make this actually look like water. Um, first off, I'm gonna take off this now at this point because we just want the normals. Okay, so you can see we got little ripples here. The biggest bang for your buck here is increasing the scale. Okay, and this is going to give a lot of the little ripples. And that's what we want. And then I actually, I'm, I'm just guessing, but I'm, I think I'm going to want this around 100 or more. Um, so that when you're down in here, those look like ripples. Also, something to get a little bit better visualization is increase this metallic and decrease this roughness. And you can see we might actually, um, I might have actually increased that scale too much. Yeah, I did way too much. My bad guys. So we can just put it somewhere in there. Oh, actually, this is <laughs> this is where the pro biggest problem is. So you can see, I'm like, this is way too much. But this is the reason that it is way too much. Your bump mat strength is at 0.1, or 1. We want to actually put it at 0 0.01, or somewhere in that range, so that it's just a mild bump. Um, or, I mean, you may want to put it at 0 0.01. Five, somewhere in there, depending on how big you want your ripples. And then you would also want to adjust that according to your scale here. But I think that's looking actually pretty good. Uh, another thing here is increase the distortion, not a ton, but like maybe around, actually that's a little too much too. Just increase it a hair because a lot of waves have a little distortion. So that's something to keep in consideration. I'm also gonna increase, Decrease the detail. Those will make it a little more flowy. And then you can play with that distortion again if you need to, or totally up to you on what you think. Just kind of play with it, eyeball it, figure out how you want. Actually looks pretty good as far as water goes for me. So now really another really cool thing is you can always animate this. Um, I'm not gonna animate it for this tutorial just for the sake of time, but you can, if you change the location of these, so if I put this at point one, It'll shift it along the x-axis. Y, same thing. Z, same thing. Well, Z, you don't really want to do because that's going to move the water up and down. But we don't want to do that. So now what we want to do is if we take this by selecting it and we hit Shift D, it'll duplicate it. And then we have all of our work done here for UV. Just make sure you connect the dots. And hit Shift A. And then type in Mix RGB. And plug it in here and then just drag your uh, color of this one oops, up into that. And you'll get the simulated effect of having two different waves. Um, man, that's weird. I'm actually gonna decrease that one to zero here. And you can see that they're now just slightly off from each other. You can increase, maybe make these ones smaller waves and these ones bigger. Something like that, and you can make it heavier towards one or the other. I think that's looking pretty good. So yeah, just keep playing with these values. This is the main gist of what you're gonna what you're gonna be working with. Those values that we played with, those are the values you're gonna be wanting to to work with. You can decrease these roughness, increase these roughness. Roughness doesn't really do a whole ton, honestly. Um, but your distortion, detail, and scale, they do make quite a bit difference. Locations, specular, and uh, roughness as well as strength. Those are your main ones you want to be playing with. Good luck. Have some fun. Um, post in the comments where you, I don't know, post your progress somewhere and then post a link to it in the comments. Love to check it out. Uh, thanks and good luck.